did a lot, a lot, and with just one single attention just to help with the, the higher energy from the original universe. Every day I thank the councils and thank the power of God and the cosmic for helping humankind to become more enlightened, more loving, and peaceful. Helping the needy is really helping yourself. The reward is more than anything you can imagine. Good boy, and I love you forever, forever. You're my best friend. It's not how much you have. It's the best you give. Help yourself, you know, cultivate, meditate, pray. You keep yourself in the same path, in the straight area. Keep your mind clean and determined. God bless you. I love you. I just show you the way. You just have to walk. You see? That's why the more positive, the more meditation, the more your life change. Okay? Positive, positive. Yeah. 
thì thì đâu có xa lắm đâu <cười> xa nhưng mà chúng con vẫn nhớ thì mới mốt trở lại ok mày có mày nói với nhớ không bao giờ đủ đâu nhìn bao giờ đủ chịu hết translation on it, they don't need translation. Okay. Elderly people, if they want to come, if they don't want them, young people. Okay, take care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a like Barbara Streisand. She said, I'm not beautiful, but I know how to to make myself beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pleasant to see a beautiful thing, huh? That's why we put flowers and stuff. And I just blend in, you know? <laughs> Decoration, everything, you know? It's a pity if, uh, oh, she is here. Oh, oh this is a good thing. <laughs> It won't match, you know. So I try to, you know, color my life. Yeah, because of you. Hmm? Yeah. Otherwise, we don't really need all this. Also, I'm too pale, you know, too pale. Suppose somebody see me so pale, they think, wow, vegetarian, no good. <laughs> they don't know about karma, you know. They don't know why. Why I'm pale sometimes. Okay, what is this? Ah, oh, okay. I have to see again. My God, everybody want me to go to their country, <laughs> and I'm only one. Yeah, the the transcendental body can go everywhere. This is the physical body. It's physical, huh? Oh man, I forgot my glass. I remember the dog's vegan bone. <laughs> but I forgot my glass. <laughs> you know, dog's bone, vegan bone, I remember. But my stuff, I don't. Okay, you want some? <laughs> Less food is all the same. <laughs> oh, you also want it for your dogs, huh? but I don't have enough vegan bones here. These are from Taiwan, from my company. So uh, we just, you know, bought some for them. <laughs> Look at Abby and Benny smiling. <laughs> you know, right? You know this. Yeah. They're really smiling that way. <laughs> Their way up to heaven, wonderful, huh? Hey, look at the happy, happy people. Yeah, so beautiful. So, uh, how is the food today? Everybody has enough? Yes. yes. Good. Even if not enough, uh, one or two days you won't die. I promise. <laughs> and if you die, well, that's what you want to do. <laughs> this is a method to teach you how to die, no? Yeah. Originally, Kwani method is like that, you know, how to die properly. <laughs> how to die every day, practice dying, <laughs> so that when you die, you don't feel terrible, yeah? and you're used to it. <laughs> what is another day of dying, but this time may be real. <laughs> According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and 
bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Okay, there is the story about another person here, similar. Huh? Okay, I told you already, I promise you to talk about the fish, yeah? Okay, thus I have heard, this is from Anand again, huh? once the Buddha uh, was in the Save country, in, uh, in the you know, golden garden of the billionaire named Kapkodok and, and, and the prince Kita. Mm. At that time, there was a, a rich person. He's very, very rich. But he has no son. Mm. So both of them, you know, uh, husband and wife, uh, went all over every every possible worshiping area to to plead for a son. Mm. Because of their sincerity, yeah, she gave birth to a, a son. Finally, yeah, and then. One time, both of them went out into uh, near the river, yeah, and playing and having picnic. And then, because they're happy, so they're tossing their child up and down, up and down. This is a thing you should not do, okay? <laughs> when when we had the king and court, they put that scene on that the the prince keep, you know, <laughs> like rocking the the baby uh, next to the water like that is, you know, uh, above the bridge. This is the thing you should not do with babies, because you might lose your hand and then you might get loose, you know, your grip, and then the baby might fall down. You don't do that on the balcony, you don't do that next to the river or any, anywhere. Hmm? Except maybe in the bed when you just cradle him a little bit, then it's okay, on bed, big bed, or on the floor, you know, carpet floor, then okay. Now, uh so and then they they were uh the mother keep you know throwing the baby in in the air and then catch him you know some people do that I keep doing that uh and then she was so happy you know and uh how said distracted by the joy and then the baby fell into the water oh my god she screamed for help and, you know, jumping around. And then a lot of people went inside the river, go in the deep bottom, but cannot find him again. So, of course, the mother collapsed, you know, from, from, from pain and sorrow, blaming herself. For a long time, she was unconscious until people helped her to put ointments and medicine, then she regained her consciousness. At the end of this river, there was a little village, and there, there was also a very rich <laughs> family, and the rich father also has no son. And he also went different uh, worshiping area, you know, wherever the thing is, is very, uh, Successful, they keep praying everywhere, but didn't get any, didn't get any son. Mm. One day he told one of his uh, servants to go out to catch some fish with a net at the, at the, on the, at the river. And then he caught one big, big fish and brought home. And when they open the stomach of the fish, the baby comes out. Still alive, yeah, and it's even 
a son. Yeah. Oh, they're so very happy, this family. And then they bath him, you know, keep make him clean everything, and then bring it to uh, the boss. Oh, the boss was so beyond himself with happy. He think, wow, up to now we've been praying for a son. So this is the heaven reward for our sincerity. This is a miracle. This is truly heaven sent. He believed that. Of course, huh? would you, no? You would? No, okay. And then they, uh, of course, they take care of this child very well and give him everything he needs, yeah? Mm. And then the, uh, the other rich person <laughs> heard that at the end of the river, <laughs> uh, one person <laughs> caught a fish and, uh, and inside the fish was a boy. Huh? So the both of them, uh, uh, husband and wife, went there and have a look. Oh, when they saw, hey, this is my boy, you know? Exactly is my boy. Because uh, the other day, my wife was playing with him, and then so he dropped into the river. Um, unfortunately, you know, but this is so, so good, so good. Thanks, all the God, that you caught him, and now we can have our son back. And then the other one, you know, the other rich person said, you are talking what? This is my son. <laughs> uh, God gives it to me. I've been praying all these years. So this son just suddenly came, you know. That is truly God's will. I not give you nowhere. <laughs> I give you nothing. This is my son. I keep. Oh, so then both of them, you know, the husband and wife will say, Oh, we love our son so much and we has been in pain and sorrow all these days because we lost our son. Please, please, have mercy. Return our son to us. Anything you want, we give. And the other man said, I want nothing. I am rich, powerful. What do I want from you? This is my son, so you please leave. And so back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Nah? So they could not uh, decide <laughs> what to do. And then they, both the family bring, brought the son to the king to, to, so that he can, you know, judge what to do, can tell what to do. So they came up and the, the one who lost the son said, Your Majesty, this is really my son. The other day my, my wife was playing with him next to the river and he, he, he fell into the river. So this is really my son. Please be, be fair, you know, and help us to regain our son. So the other one, the one who, who, how do you say, who, who become the son? Huh? Who cannot capture? Huh? Who got the fish? The one who discovered. Huh? Discovered. Found the fish. You found the son, yeah. Also say, Your Majesty, this is my servant, you know, caught the fish. And, and then inside the fish is this son. It's not from, from this family. This is from the fish. <laughs> okay. okay. So the, the, the king say. Oh my God, only one child and two family claim him. Ah, okay, so he's, he thinks, the king thought that, uh, he said that, okay, this child, both of family can raise him, you know, take turns to raise him. And when he grows up, uh, each family found a wife for him. And whichever family has a son, then that son will belong to that family. Understand that? Yeah. Two wives and two family. Which wife have bear the next son, then it belong to that family. Okay? So both of them thanked the king and thought that's a, okay. It's a not too bad solution. <laughs> they want to obey the king's decision. 
So day after day, and you know, day uh, turned to months and years, and both the family uh, raised him up, and both the uh, possession belonged to him, and each family uh, married him a wife. Okay. And one time, uh, uh, he has to go to another uh, area, another city, uh, to do something. Mm. But it seems like it's a great affinity. Yeah. So when he finished his business, he saw the Buddha, uh, by the way, when he was uh, going around preaching in different places. And he saw the Buddha so bright, so much uh, light around him, and he looked very, very significant a person. And a lot of people, you know, follow him and became his disciples. So he he felt suddenly very, very respectful. He felt like he found something that he wanted. So he went in front of the Buddha, uh, uh, prostrate to him, and then sit at one side to listen to the Buddha's uh, lecture. After a while, uh, after hearing the Buddha, he felt like he's like a he felt like he's a dried dead tree became alive again, you know, like springtime again, after a long winter. Mm. And then uh, and then also there are rain, you know, coming down and then make all the buds come back. When I left, when he left to came, uh, go home that day, he was so happy, happy, and excited. And then he wanted to become a uh, renunciate under the Buddha's uh, <laughs> protection. <laughs> Everybody see the Buddha just want to become a monk <laughs> and nuns, yeah. Even though, and it's, it's, it's like an iron wheel in him, you know? Like nothing will move him now, nothing will change that. Even though the both family give him a lot of luxury, money, and everything he needs, but he doesn't feel uh, satisfied with that. He feel like he feel all this possession and richness. It's just like the cloud in the sky, you know. If a little wind blow, and then nothing is there. Uh, as or as is like uh, the the form in the, at the ocean when the wave come in there's some form but after a while nothing yeah that's what he felt about the possession and the existence of this this life so he wanted really to become a Buddha uh, or to become a monk so he he uh, uh, told his his uh, desire to the both family parents. He said that, uh, uh, beloved parents, yeah, something like that. <laughs> when I was born, I already had this uh, accident that the, uh, the fish swallow me up, yeah. But uh, luckily, I'm still alive, or else I would have died already. I would have lost my life anyway, yes. So, and I think about that, and I feel that nothing in this life is really permanent. Nothing is really s solid and lasting. Even I have beautiful wives, uh, or high position in the society, or a lot of, Possession, I don't feel, I feel this is all impermanent. So I would like to uh, only only uh, become the monk and then uh, practicing the, the truth, then it would be the best, the, the lasting happiness, the true happiness for me. Please let me go. Then uh, the both the family feel, you know, suddenly also enlightened, you know, open their heart and and say to him, "It's all right if that's what you want." So both parents okay for him. 
to go to become a monk. That's rare, huh? <laughs> Normally, one parent is already difficult. It's <laughs> two parents and also two wives as well. Oh, these are really, he's really lucky, huh? Don't you think? Nah? Yeah. Even just to go and retreat is already very difficult <laughs> with the wives or the husband, not to talk about both parents, both wives, <laughs> and all the friends, everybody. Let him just go like that, huh? Lucky guy, my God. Wouldn't you like to be like that, huh? <laughs> okay, and then after that he, he uh, went to the Buddha's residence and uh, he prostrate or bow in front of the Buddha and said, Were on a one, uh, human body is difficult to attain. Uh, physical life is, is like uh, illusionary, ir- illusionary dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I sincerely want to leave it all behind and come here humbly, beg you to accept me with your merciful heart, merciful compassion to to be one of your monk's disciples. So the Buddha say, welcome, welcome monk. And then he became a monk. So simple, huh? <laughs> And then uh, all his hair will be gone off, and then his body changed into the chasa monk, monk's clothes. And uh, he gave him the Dharma name, uh, Trungtin. Eh? Mm. And he was very diligent and concentrated in his uh, new life. And then after a while, not too long, he attained Arahant position. Seeing, th- seeing thus, I, Anan, eh? as the Buddha, not I, okay? <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> I mean Anan. Anan uh, kneel down and beg the Buddha to explain how come, uh, what kind of, uh, of merit did, uh, did uh, this monk Trung Tin has saw in the former life so that he even went through the fish mouth into the fish body so long and did not even die, not even from suffocation or the, the acid, acidity from the fish uh, stomach. You know, they digest anything. Yeah. And then, even then, he has the fortune of two families. And then now even can come here and be one of your disciple monk. So the Buddha say, Anan, listen. A long, long, long time ago, long, long, yeah, there was a Buddha uh, appear on, on this planet also. His name is Dibati. One time, uh, one day, he was uh, uh, preaching to the great assembly, and there was um, a rich man went there to listen to the Buddha talk. And then at that time, the Buddha was talking about the merit of, uh, of charity, yeah, of charity. Mm. And also the merit of keeping the five precepts, yes. And then he was so happy, uh, very gladly, uh, very glad to have the faith in the Buddha. He was very, very happy and very certainly his faith in the Buddha, you know, born in his heart. So he asked the Buddha to, to accept him as the lay disciple, you know, yes, to uh, take refuge in the three jewels, mean the Buddha, the Sangha, and the Dharma, the teaching. Huh? Buddha, the Sangha, mean monks, and the Dharma mean the teaching. Because, uh, and then after he 
Uh, of course, he he also um, take the vow not to kill, huh? Not to kill and not to harm. You know, ahimsa, our first, our first uh, pre precept, right? Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm another person. <laughs> English run away from me. All right. And after that, after uh, take refuge in the the three jewels, he take out one. Oh, one golden coin and give it to the Buddha, offer it to the Buddha. Because of that, so life after life, his merit is, you know, immeasurable. In on this uh, world, not many people can compare to him. Yeah, in you know, in richness and merit and health and all the good things as he has. Yeah. Anan, that rich person at that time, this now is a Tungtin monk, you know, Bichu. Bichu means a high monk already, yeah. Uh, Sami means lower monk, just novice, you know? Novice, right? Or novice? Huh? Novice, novice yes, yes. So he's already Bichu, meaning high monk, yeah, high priest. Uh, from then on, from, from that time until now, Trung Tin has enjoyed richness and uh, honor for ni 91, uh, 91 aeons. Imagine, just a number, but meaning a lot, a lot, a lot, yes. Because you will see that Buddha always mentioned that. If somebody has a lot, a lot of merit, he will say 91 aeons. <laughs> Buddha love, love numbers. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the eight, uh, the eight uh, noble path, the four noble truths, the 12 uh, affinities, you know. <laughs> huh? The three jewels. <laughs> Etc. Etc. Yeah, yeah. And eighty-four thousand uh, means to enlightenment. Yeah, eighteen arahan of five hundred uh, bhikkhu, whatever that is. Huh? He likes numbers. Just to to make sure that the 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 assembly understand. Yeah, because without a concrete number, maybe people cannot grasp it very well. Just say, oh, it's a numerous lifetime. It's a numerous, how, how, how long is numerous? <laughs> I keep thinking, you know? So he just has to give them a number, yeah? Yes. And the five precepts, the 10 good merit ways and all that, everything he has a number. So make sure that everybody cannot argue anymore. <laughs> like, do only four is good enough or not? No, five, okay? And then because, uh, because of that, and nowadays he, he could have, he could enjoy the both uh, prosperity and richness from both family. And because he always keep the, the first precept very, very sincerely, the non-killing, non the ahimsa, the non-harming others. Therefore, even the fish cannot digest him, <laughs> cannot kill him, yeah? Swallow him, but <laughs> cannot do anything about it. <laughs> and because he also uh, take refuge in the three jewels, yeah? That is the, and therefore today he has a chance to meet me to bath in the truth dharma and uh, attain arohan arahan position free from life and death in the three realms after hearing all this i anan yeah and all the people there so happy and their faith is uh, multiply, and they sincerely want to continue practice. And they bow or prostrate to the Buddha, and then 
left. Okay, huh? Good. This also an, that is another short story. Yeah. Uh, any question? Hmm. Mm. You see, keeping just even five precepts. Yeah. Especially the non non-violent precept, no killing, then you live forever. <laughs> you can try, you jump into the stomach <laughs> of the fish and then tell me if, it's, if the Buddha say the thing correct or not. Hmm. The Buddha don't tell lie. He's a Buddha already. Yeah? Life after life, he sacrificed a lot. Therefore, he became a Buddha. That is for ordinary sentient beings. Yeah? Ordinary person can 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 attain Buddhahood by being sincere, you know, morally stable, keep the precepts, and uh, sacrifice for others. But the Buddhas were very very extreme. I tell you one story, okay? Yeah, one story. One of the the, the sacrifice. Otherwise, if I read all of this sacrifice, it takes forever. But one day, <laughs> if we have more time, I will read it. Yeah, it's a lot, and you know my talent of translation nowadays is terrible. Uh, so I read a, a, a short story. It's a charming way. What? Yeah. The translation is very charming. So it's really <laughs> charming. Charm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. She always praises me. Uh, she always makes me feel good. Thank you. Okay, so I couldn't find the other one, so I just read one. The one of this is similar, okay? A little bit extreme also. The Buddha, he, he sacrificed everything so that one day he will become Buddha. Whenever he sacrificed something, he vowed that from this merit, I just want to be Buddha. I don't want to be the Brahman, I don't want to be Vishnu, I don't want to be the king of the three world or nothing. I just want to be Buddha. I mean, enlightened master, so that I can help others enlighten and lessen their suffering. Yeah, that's why. But life after life, yeah, countless lifetime that he sacrificed a lot. That's why I told you, I, I don't want to be a Buddha. <laughs> I don't want to come back and be Buddha. If it has to be so mo so many lifetime like that, I just practice Kuan Yin method. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, because before, many lifetime, he was even king and queen and all that. What time is it now? Maybe we could do it, huh? Are you sleepy? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, then I try to read this one. Maybe just half and tomorrow another half. Okay, huh? Yeah. Just to, to let you know why I say I don't want to become a Buddha. Okay. This chapter... Uh, title Brahma uh, Brahma asked for uh, for Dharma, you know, the truth, the, the teaching. Thus I have heard one time the Buddha in the Save country in in the Tien Thang uh, ashram. He has another ashram. Eh? People keep offering different ashrams so he can come and go and stay with his monks. Um, because of compassion, sincere compassion, to save sentient beings. So how so, uh, in order to, to save all sentient beings and all that, he has sacrifice and work very hard, life after life, so many lifetimes. Very, very uh, tiring and suffering a lot to become a Buddha. Yeah. When he first uh, attained Buddhahood, he felt like it is so difficult <laughs> for anyone on this planet to aspire to Buddhahood, 
that because he has been doing so much sacrifice and suffering, understand life after life, he can look back and see. So he thought, no one can do this. Yeah. So he thought to himself, it's too difficult, too difficult. All the sentient beings, their, ar- their ignorance is so deep, so profound. And this ignorance is like poison into their system, yeah? into their mind and their soul, their heart. So their mind, their heart is very cha- chaotic. Yeah, it's not stable, not in good condition. And their concept is very narrow. Their wisdom is zero. <sighs> Mostly they follow the, uh, the, the not correct way of, of teaching, yeah? the incorrect way of teaching. So difficult, so difficult to now to teach them the truth and to bring them into the right path. So he was shaking his head, he said, even so, in this case, even if I continue to stay in this life, in this life, it's useless. No use, no use. It is better, maybe I go to the, the emptiness of nirvana. It's better. And then, the uh, Brahman, the king of the third world, third level, his, he looked down and he hear the Buddha's thought. So he, uh, he flew from his <laughs> thorn, from the third level down, in front of the Buddha. He, he, he um, I say, Phew. He greeted the Buddha, you know, very respectfully, humbly. And then he kneeled down with his uh, palm together, respectfully uh, say to the Buddha, I prostrate to you, were honor one. Just now, I receive your, your thought that the, the all beings on this planet are so difficult to, to teach, and then you want to um, enter nirvana. Because of that, I came here and beg you to stay on this planet to, um, you know, to give the, the teaching to all beings. Actually, this word is mean triumphab, meaning like initiation, kind of, you know? Yeah. So that the the so that the uh, the light of the truth will spread all over uh, the the world as well as in heaven. So all beings will bathe in your merit and your blessing. And then they will be liberated from life and death, and from the lower birth of. Uh, animals or devils, you know, ghosts, uh, hungry, go- uh, hungry ghosts and in hell, etc., etc. And they will be peaceful in Buddha's land. Please be happy, please, uh, please, please be compassionate and open your mercy to receive uh, to accept my request. It's very difficult. They have uh, all, all, all type of writing, you know? Very, very respectful and a lot of prostration to you and this and that. It's very difficult for me to translate into a modern language, you know? Yeah. Even if they don't prostrate, they would say, I prostrate, you know? Meaning very respectful. Or maybe they touch a Buddha with their head, or maybe not, they would just say very humbly like that, yeah? As if they're prostrate. So the Buddha said, oh, you have such a good heart and pleading for all beings. Okay, then it's not, it's not so bad. But you know, I observed, yeah? That all beings are so covered 
with the ignorance, dust of life. And they only running after, uh, you know, like uh, sensual pleasures, high position, you know, name and fame and richness, and they just eat and sleep, you know, indulge in physical pleasure, 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 uh, in anger and in hatred, and their heart are so, so blackened, has no wisdom in it. So I think even if I stay here on this planet, it's useless. It's, it's a waste of time and energy. Therefore, I want to go to Nirvana, yeah, enjoy hmm? better. So the Brahma king, the Brahma god, say again, I prostrate to you, honor one. Just a saying, you know, may not be that he prostrate physically. It's just a very respectful talk, you know? Like I bow to you. Or honor one, please uh, have mercy toward me and all others in the heavens as well as on earth. Because uh, we are covered by the ignorance uh, way, life after life. They don't know where to go. Day, day and night, they are just you know, faster, faster, right? No, like, huh? Fetter, yeah, yeah. In, in this kind of bound um, bondage, don't even know when they can be free. So please have mercy. They say it better than this, but <laughs> just I just make it short. <laughs> even he begged for heavens as well. You know, heavenly beings. Yeah, in the three worlds. Not, not just the humans are ignorant, eh? heavenly beings also, after their marriage is finished, their flower on their head, you know, the, the, the light on their head would be dim and uh, wither, and then they die. Either, either be born again in human's world or in animal's world even. If there's no, uh, if there's no enlightened master been teaching them since they were on earth already. Then even in heaven, nobody teach them. They had no master. They belong nowhere. They just enjoy the heavenly pleasure for a while. Depends on how much merit they had, and then they die like everyone, everyone else. And then they're very sad before they die because they know exactly they are dying. It's not like us even. We don't even know. So boom, we die. Okay, fine. <laughs> you know, it's quicker. You don't have to spend days or months or weeks worrying about you dying and knowing where you're going. You know, down, lower level, knowing already. And there's nothing you can even do. You know, with all your power in heaven, nothing you can do. Uh, the Brahman said to the Buddha, right now, you know, right now, it seems like the, the Dharma will be elevated, will be spread out. It's a good time to teach other beings. I have seen that uh, there are many, many beings will be enlightened, will be saved by your blessing, by your teaching. So please stay. Please stay here and help whoever you can. Yes. Because I remember in so, so many countless, uh, lifetime countless kalpa, countless uh, eons, you know, because of us, all beings, that you have you have uh, gathered even just one stanza of the truth, or one uh, quadrant, paragraph, you know, pa quadrant of the, the truth. Because you, you wanted to, to know the truth so much. So even you sacrifice your own life, you forsake your wife and children, you sacrifice for the truth. 
very scary, very frightening in way. So no one can even can even compare. No one can even do what you did all this lifetime. <coughs> because of that, because of all this, and now you have become Buddha. Because of us that you wanted to become Buddha. And because of us that you sacrificed so many lifetimes. So now you have become Buddha. Please don't forsake us. Yeah. <laughs> I feel goosebumps too, you know, I feel very touched too. You know, for what he said. Yeah. Now that uh World Honor One has already attained the ultimate goal of your life that you wanted. But uh, all of us are still still like grass on the ground, covered by thick uh, fog, yeah? Fog, right? Fog. Dew? Huh? Dew fog. Yeah, yeah, fog. So many, 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 many lifetime and waiting for the, the, the sun to to dispel all this uh, covering so that we can see they can see um you can see the light and can bud into flowers and beautiful beautiful uh beings yes i prostrate to you i beg you please do not forsake us and go into nirvana not so soon he said yeah and I remember another time, it's a very long time ago, there was a king named Tuloba, also on this planet. He has, uh, he, he ruled over 84,000 smaller countries. I oh, just told you, numbers. <laughs> it has to be 84,000. Many times he mentioned that. Even in not this king, but the other king also rule over 84,000 <laughs> and have 10,000 uh, great officers in the court, in his court, etc., you know. And then he has, yeah, he has uh, 6,000, no, 60,000 uh, mountains and rivers, meaning his country is big, yeah. <laughs> It has, has to be number. It's, it's, yeah, it's more visualizing, you know? It's more concrete, right? If you say, oh, a lot of mountain and river, we, we cannot grasp, you know, the mind. So he, he uses numbers all the time. It has to be 60,000 mountain and river, okay? And then he has, oh, 800,000 uh, smaller, uh, what is it like in Africa stuff? Tribe, tribe, huh? Tribes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Those are tribals, yes. And then he has uh, twenty thousand wife, oh. and he had ten thousand great <laughs> officials in court officials. Well, in the old time, they, you know, they have wife and they have concubines and then they have. Uh, you know, ladies in waiting, uh, servants and all that, and all included. <laughs> because once in, in the former life, in the former time, even not even recently, like say Qinglong Dynasty or something like that, you know, not, not far ago, not long ago, the king always have a lot of ladies, yeah? He has one wife and two second wife, two uh, second and third wife. In case the first wife cannot bear a son, then the second wife or the third wife. Or maybe the first wife is in a bad mood, then he go to the other, so <laughs> <laughs> it's convenient. <laughs> no need to wait or beg her to reconcile or thing like that. He's a king, you know, he can't just say, sorry, honey, come back. Yeah? She went back to mother and then he went to the second or the third. He's a king, yeah? And then apart from that, he has concubines, which he probably never touched, never seen. But he must have. It's for his dignity. I don't know why they do that. And so all these virgin maidens had to offer themselves to the king, either voluntarily or force, by force. Yeah? And then they would never, ever marry again, marry anyone else. 
they belong to the king, even though the king probably never saw them, never have anything to do with them. But they have to be there for him, in case he ever wants it. And he not, they're not allowed to marry anyone else. Yeah. If they have, uh, you know, kind of a side affair with anyone and caught that, that is chop head, both. <laughs> you know, the, the boy and the girls. Yeah. And all the boys are useless anyway. They are eunuchs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, cut, chop, chop. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> so, so that's why he has a lot of wives. He wants to make sure all the boys are chop, chop. <laughs> a chop, chop, chop off, you know where, right? So, so they, can, they cannot mess up with his 2,000 wives, two, two, 20,000 wives. My God, what can the king do with 20,000 wives? I'm telling you. Even one wife is a big headache already. What's he, what's he doing? Twenty thousand. <laughs> but this is a, you know, tradition like that. Kings have a lot of wives. They take any. He take any he wants. Any of the concubine. Or maybe he doesn't. But it's there for him all the time. Understand? And then they do something else. Then you know, maybe they serve the queen. They do something. You know, just a pastime. <laughs> or play with a eunuch. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> this is not Buddha stuff, huh? Yeah, but just in case you don't know, <laughs> just in case you wonder why the king has twenty thousand wives. Oh, yeah, this this the way it is, you know? Yes, the way it was, huh? Okay. And nowadays, if you have second wife, whoa, <laughs> trouble, trouble with the law or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. What love? Still exist? Where? In Arab? Maybe in some country, some smaller country. Kings or maybe. Yeah, not only the king in the old time have many wives, the, the court officials, you know, or any rich person, any rich man, he has you know, seven, ten, twenty wives, no problem, or more, you know. And then whoever is not uh, uh, caught by his blue eyes, then they become like more or less a servant. Yeah, doing things in the house, serving the big wife or doing anything. Yeah. But whoever be among them bear a son, then the elevated status, you know, become the third or fourth or fifth wife, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Has to be son, okay? We women are nada. In the in the former time we are nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Always a man. Maybe that's good. that's why God made me come into this human woman body just to show him, just to show him that we women can do some. <laughs> it has some effect, now. Yeah? yeah. Nowadays we have many prime minister women, president women. Thank God, huh? Thank God. And the high officials also women. Yeah. And the high banking official woman. Yeah. Like Christina Lagarde, for example. Yeah. They're all powerful now. They're powerful, powerful. Even Indian, India have uh, female uh, president, yeah? Before, yeah? yeah. Maybe, maybe still there? Not India, Gandhi, recently. A new one. President. Yeah. Not Indra Gandhi, no, no. Now. A few, few months ago. Yeah. Pa no, pa Pakistan is another one. <laughs> What did you say? Yeah, yeah. She president or prime minister? President. She was president. She told you, you India, you don't know nothing. <laughs> you what? What did you say? No, she's the president. Yeah, you good, good, good. Now you know. <laughs> okay, just so rare to have a president and you forgot, huh? <laughs> This is a thing that you should never forget, right? It's so rare. Hmm? So rare. What? I'm also Indian. You are Indian? Or oh, you look like Indian to me. <laughs> Blonde hair and all. <laughs> Blonde hair and fair skin. Oh, yeah? Good for you. Good for you. You see? Woman, we know more than you, huh? Look at that. What kind of Indian is he? Huh? Just eating curry and doing nothing and don't <laughs> and don't even read the newspaper, don't watch the television. 
What you been doing all, your, all this time in your life? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't understand this kind of man, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Now. <laughs> huh? Where else? Where were we? Okay, okay. I remember the the Brahman, Brahman God, né? the God of the third world, the the highest level in the third, in the in our physical spiritual dimension, yeah. Mm. Lower physical spiritual dimension. Even Brahman came and begged the Buddha, the enlightened master, to teach, to to enlighten him and all his heavenly beings, and not just the humans. Not just this physical level, understand? Because Brahma also one day kaput. Yeah, when his time gone, his world also dissolved, just like our planet one time, or not? You see? Yeah. So he said he came and begged the Buddha. Also now he said, I also remember your world honor one. World honored one is one of the title respected title that people address the Buddha, okay? Yeah. He has many, like, we'll honor one, Arahant, uh, enlightened one, uh, Buddha, okay? Like that. Or also, uh, heaven and earth, master. Also, many names like that. It's just honorary title, honor title. He has ten on a title, but I don't remember all. That's enough for you anyway, okay? <laughs> ten, <laughs> also ten. <laughs> we can't run away from numbers with him. Long time ago, there was a, a, a king named Tuloba, also on this planet. He has, okay, already say many thousand already, huh? Okay. Uh, and then at that time, uh, his moral, his fame and his power, no one can compare at this time. He's absolute, you know, the, the master of all the kings. Because all the, his subjects and all the sub-subjects uh, rely on his, on his merit, his uh, moral uh, store of merit. So all of uh, the countries very prosperous, happy, and peaceful. Yeah. So everyone is very, very glad, and they worship him. But one time, one day, he was thinking to himself, concerning material possession and comfort, I lack nothing. But concerning spiritual uh, practice, To, to be able to liberate others, I don't have. If uh, a human just uh, live with material, uh, material gain only, or following uh, sexual desire, thing like that, you know, physical desire, then the heart is, is just like trees and wood, yes? or pebbles and stones. And then to invite four, <laughs> four disaster come into his life. That is <laughs> being born, you know, painful when you're born, you know, painful. It is said that when the, the because we say, why, why is the Buddha included being born as one of the disaster, you know, for the human being? Because according to scientists, when the baby is born, their skin was like many of the very painful, sore, you know, and a lot of uh, radicals and uh, um, bacteria attack them right away. Yeah. If they has not been protected by somehow by themselves or by the mother's uh, DNA or with the mother breast, that's why they always 
recommend that uh, the mother should breastfeed their babies because the mother's milk from her own breast will give the baby more, more protection than any other medicine can afford. So it's, it's very lucky for any baby who is a breast, breastfed it by his own mother. Yeah. So he included. At that time, there's no scientific, scientific proof, proof, but the Buddha already know being born is a pain. You see, the four pain, the four disasters of human life is being born, getting old, getting sick, and die. So it's a four noble truth, he said. How noble that can that be? <laughs> Born, die, and sick. What do you call it? Four noble truth. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right, then. So it's, it's not different than any animals, you know, just eat and sleep, and even uh, laying on top of uh, the, the pool, you know, on the dung, and don't feel anything just to pass time. It is my fault, the king thought. I have to find a way. It is my duty to find a way to liberate them, to liberate all these ignore, ignoramus that he mentioned above. Okay? After thinking thirst, he, uh, he posted, um, how you say, it? Help. Flyer. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> huh? He posted the. Huh? Yeah, he posts messages, yeah? And a flyer everywhere, uh, taping on the walls everywhere, and asking all the people under the sun, anyone who knows about the truth of enlightened saints you know, to liberate other beings, can come and teach me. And then whatever that person wants, I will give, without reservation. Yeah. He probably thinking just all the, the store of uh, jewels and money and, you know, even his kingdom or even his throne. Yeah. Okay. So, Oh, there was a god again, you know, the lower god of the astral level. Hear about that, see that. So he want to come down and test the king. Oh, this, this boring god, there has nothing better to do than making trouble. <laughs> yeah, story after story, you will see. All this kind of god keep coming down, making trouble for the Buddha. The poor Buddha, I mean the poor Buddha-to-be. He's just a mortal, right? He has no power, nothing. He has only a sincere desire to liberate other beings, his subjects, for example. And then they have to come down and make trouble. You see what trouble he, he make. You will see. You will see and you cannot love them. Thank God we're not going there. We pass by, yeah? <laughs> Hello and say you're not, you know. Pass by the astral level. But be respectful, huh? Otherwise he come and test you and then I, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. Okay, this is a god, Koti Samung. He's one of the king in the, uh, no, probably astral level. He came down. He uh, changed himself, you know, he used a magical power no? to change himself into a vampire. Yeah, the face is very, very blue and green. No, green and blue, sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's a glowing green kind of, you know, ugly green. And his eyes is so red like blood. And his uh, teeth are as big as the banana. <laughs> <laughs> and it protruded out like fangs, you know. Ah, banana, banana, banana. <laughs> Probably his mouth will look like a bunch of bananas. <laughs> okay, must be scary, yeah. Yeah, and then his, his hair is growing upward, you know, standing up. Probably he used some kind of spray, you know. <laughs> uh, gel, huh? Uh, hair gel. <laughs> Probably bought it from supermarket and, and take it up like those junk nowadays, you know, punky people. 
No, hair all stood up. Yeah. And his mouth, uh, you know, the fire comes out from his mouth. I, I guess he has some oil inside and then pull out, you know, like those people. And then, you know, you know these uh, circus people? They can do that. Probably that's what he does. No, he's not. He's just making trouble. He's just making himself look like a trouble already. And then he came in front of the, the, the palace, torn away the, tear, tear away the, the, the flyer, and then say to the, the, the gatekeeper, you, go inside, tell the king, I know the truth, I will teach him. Let me in quickly. If he wants, I will teach him. Okay, the, 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 the gatekeeper was, uh, okay, quickly, quickly, go inside and, <laughs> and say, Your Majesty, uh, outside, there is, a, <laughs> there is a, I don't know, a being or a person or whatever. He's, his appearance is terrifying, yeah. But he said, he professed that he know the Buddha's teaching, you know, the truth, enlightened teaching. So he wants to come in and teach you. Uh, please tell me what to do. So the the king was very happy. Oh, he put on his hat, you know, his crown, wear his um, majesty clothes, you know, the best appearance, and come out to the gate and greet that person and invited him in. And then he even let that <laughs> terrifying being sit on his throne as a sign of respect, just to show how much he's thirsty for the truth, knowledge, understand, and how humble he was, how sincere he was in this matter. That's what it is, okay? He wanted to show that. Probably that's what he felt, you know? Oh, so rare, you know? So rare to have the truth. And then he treat him like God, of course, eh? right? And in the next morning, he prepared a very high days, beautifully decorated, maybe similar to this, you know? Okay, or better. <laughs> and then he, he uh, served him meals and drinks, and then he asked all his uh, musicians in the court, playing music, singing song, welcoming, you know, and dancing and all that, welcoming the teacher on the days, on the days, yeah, on the platform. And then the and all the, the court officials, yeah, and the citizens in front uh, of him, in front of the teacher. And the, the king come out, uh, greet uh, the teacher, and kneel down prostrate in front of him, this uh, terrifying person. Imagine, imagine, huh? He must be really, really sincere. Hmm? And he, he, he prostrate in front of the the teacher, you know, this terrifying <laughs> a vampire looking, and, and requested, you know, plead for the truth teaching. So the vampire said to him, <coughs> <coughs> You know, king, to learn the truth is a very difficult thing. You want to hear it? It's not easy. I'm warning you, okay? Not teaching yet, just warning. <laughs> and the king say, uh, very humbly, yeah? Please, sir, uh, please have mercy and compassion and on us, yeah? We are ignorant. We don't know how to, how to, Oh, how to request properly, yes, and respectfully. Uh, please teach us how to do it so that we can hear the teaching. And, uh, you know, the teacher, <coughs> the teacher, <laughs> the vampire teacher said, if you bring your wife and children here for me to eat, then I'll teach you. I told you it's scary. So oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be Buddha like that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So after the king heard that, he obeyed him and said uh, he will obey and do that, what he wished. So he came back to the, the palace 
call his wife and children. He said, I have to tell you this. Husband, wife, parents, children, loving each other, clinging to each other, but it's only in the cycle of life and death, of impermanence. Even so much love one day must separate. Even so much attachment one day must cut asunder by death or disaster or sickness, anything, anything. Anything in this world is not real, it's not permanent. So because I want to find a real way, the truth, in order to liberate myself also and for you also, meaning the wife and the children. Therefore, I want to, you to offer your life to the teacher because that's what he wanted, so that I can, I can learn how to become Buddha. What do you think about this? Uh, the wife, not you. The wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still telling the story. <laughs> if I don't, I would warn you in, in advance. What do you think the wife say? Do it. Huh? Do it. Do it? <laughs> what? You crazy? Uh -huh. Anyone else? Any idea what the wife would say? To agree. Uh huh. Anyone else? You mad? You crazy? No. No. So they agree. They kneel down in front of the king, say, "We will obey your command." Yeah, just like that. Probably that's at that time the wife must absolutely obey the husband, the children also. But maybe because they also know this is for good cause. You see, probably the king is such a uh, true seeker, sincerely true seeker, and so the wife and the son already knew that, yeah, and also be used to it, uh, became used to with his idea and his way of, you know, searching already. Huh? Abraham. Abraham. Yes. Yeah, he also also sacrificed his son, but then finally the god didn't kill the son. Yeah, but he killed a goat. What kind of goat? Oh, maybe it's just symbolic, you know? Yeah, he probably won't kill the goat either. Either What kind of god who needs to eat the goat anyway? Then I won't worship him. But the Buddha was so desperate, you know? He was so sincere, and so sincere, so pure in his heart, that he doesn't doubt one second this kind of teacher, you know, who even asked to eat human flesh before he even teach the truth. You understand? Nowadays, you know, even you would say, you know, I won't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Probably I also say I won't do it. <laughs> yeah. But he was so pure, so sincere, so desperate. So they do that. Okay. After having uh, obtained the agreement from his wife and children, he brought them in front of the teacher, of the uh, vampire-looking teacher, and gave it to them. And then the teacher in front of the whole assembly take them one by one, eat them. Yeah, I'm telling you. In a blink of an eye, in a blink of an eye, he finished them. Alive. Everybody sticking his tongue out and you know and shake their head and oh, you know what I mean, yeah? Oh God. Everybody was so scared, so frightened, and so disgusted. I would be, too. Hmm? We would be. At that time, all the court officials and the citizens saw that the king doing such thing, you know, they don't like. They don't agree to that. They don't feel satisfied with that. And then they feel that the king is too uh, superstitious, you know, too stupid, too, too crazy in his belief, yeah. But they do not know truly that the king do all that, that other being, other human could never do, because he truly want 
to find a way to liberate others, yeah? So he sacrificed. The, the officers, you know, and the citizens, they were just like, they compared it, just like those frogs that lay in the bottom of the, uh, the well, doesn't see anything else except the well, a little sky <laughs> with the, in the well's uh, mouth. Okay, after, oh, he say, to be able to see far, yeah, and know wider things, wider uh, knowledge, not every mortal can, 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 uh, can understand, yeah. So nobody understand the king, that's what they meant, yeah, okay. Now, after eating all the, beings there, you know, the wife of the king, the, the queen and the princess, he read this stanza. It's a stanza, right? Four, four sentences. It's a stanza or it's a quadrant? Quadrant, okay. He read this to the king, he say. Everything is impermanent. Oh, don't we know that? <laughs> <laughs> if you're born, then you suffer. You have to suffer. Meaning, if you have a human life, then you suffer. Don't we know that? Yeah. Uh, if, if, if the king just came to us, even you can tell him. <laughs> <laughs> right? No need to offer the wife and the children. So, everything is impermanent. If you're born, then you will have to suffer. Uh, the five senses, yeah? has no real substance. I and everything I possess is all illusion. That is the four stanzas that he gave to the king. And then after the king heard this, oh, he was so happy, so happy, so happy. What kind of king who doesn't even know these things? Huh? Yeah, I guess it's a different when you are when you've spoken from somebody with authority and enlightenment, you know, heaven authority, instead of anybody who just say, or oh, read the book. It's different, huh? Maybe that's why. Just like in initiation, it's different from being from a master or just reading whatever, you know, saying enlighten is good. <laughs> you know, we all have Buddha inside and we all can become Buddha, blah, blah, blah. blah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And then, after that, he told all of his subordinates, copy these stanzas and give it to everyone in his uh, kingdoms and the sub-kingdom. And then after the, 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 let's say, the god, no? in the form of a vampire, saw that the, the king was really, you know, pacified and have no moving, no moved because losing the wife and be the wife and children being eaten like that. So he changed himself back into the glorious God again and said to the king, wow, oh, precious, precious, yeah, you are really, your majesty really respect uh, the truth. So therefore, it's not long after you will become Buddha. You won't be, you w it won't be long until you become Buddha. And then after that, after he spoke to us, the queen and all the princess, you know, return back to normal. <laughs> yay! Yay, 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 yay! What a test, huh? Oh, goosebump, telling you. Just, you know, as normal. Yeah, alive. So, uh, how you say? <laughs> War honor one. The King Tuloba at that time is you. It was you. Yeah. Uh, Buddha. Yeah, it was you. In such a long time before, you, you, you sacrificed so much for the truth. How come you want, how come you have the heart now to forsake us? and go to Nirvana. Yeah, and then he said, well, honor one, I also remember another Ian, Ian, long, long time ago, in the past, also on this planet, 
there was a king. This is many lifetime of the Buddha, ne? There was this one already scary. You want to listen more? Yes? <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no, I'm fine. It's just that it's rarely that you have time to come here. I also have to take time for you, even though I also have other work to do. It's not like I don't have. But I'm also glad to see you, and I perceive your sincerity and your pure heart, so I also have to do my best for you. It's just that body is, is different from mine, you see? Sometimes I'm, I drive my body crazy. So I got sick and I got trouble, but what to do? <laughs> if I have another person like me, then I would take turn, you know? <laughs> or maybe seven, then Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> Monday I work, Tuesday I work. <laughs> you all understood, right? Have, Joko, you have? Okay. No need translation around here, no? Uh, never mind, if you don't understand, just laugh and later ask a neighbor. <laughs>